Hi, my name is Leandro Facchinetti, and in this video, I want to give you an update on a previous video of mine in which I showed you how to truncate silence in Reaper. And since then, I evolved this action somewhat and I turned it into a custom action. I said here in the video description that maybe someone could turn this into a custom action and I did it. So I want to show you how that works, how to set up, how to set it up yourself. And I'm going to later show you step by step what's going on in this custom action. It's, it's a similar idea to the original video, but it is different in some ways. And I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, so let's go to Reaper. And I want to start by going through the action, just running it, showing you how you can achieve some great results with podcasts and conversations, anything that has a lot of dead air that you want to get rid of. And I'm not saying just to uh, gate the sound so that when someone's not speaking, you won't hear them, but actually take that moment in time and take it out of the recording. So you end up with only material that you want to use. Okay, so here I have an example project. I'm going to bring these two tracks. They are two different people speaking. And I'm going to bring them two separate tracks. And this is actually a full episode of a podcast. And I wanted to use this as an example because you can see how it actually works with, I think it's like almost one hour worth of audio. Uh, yeah, it's about 50 minutes of audio. So you can see it, that the action actually runs pretty fast. Okay, so I have here the dialogue and I'm going to select the tracks in, I don't need to necessarily select the items, it doesn't matter if you do, but you do need to select the tracks. Oh, one thing that you have to do with the items is you have to make sure that they align. So in this case, both tracks were recorded with the same recorder, so they are already, and as you can see, it's a Zoom recorder, multi-track, so both tracks are already synced up, but if you record using Skype or something else, then you have to sync all the tracks first, and you want to make sure that the items are aligned. So if you have something like this, then either you want to cut the other item to align, or if for some reason you don't want to cut, then make sure you create some dummy item here just to fill in the space so that everything aligns. So in my case, with the default Reaper configuration, I can hold command. Uh, I can hold command on a Mac, and I guess you can hold Control on a PC, and then just drag, and that's going to create uh, an, a, a MIDI item, really. But you don't care about the MIDI data; it's just an empty item, just to fill in the space to make sure that all the items are aligned. And if you have just one piece of recording, like I have here, I have just. I recorded the whole episode in one stretch. But if you have multiple pieces, then you want to make sure that they are all aligned. It doesn't matter if you have multiple pieces, it's okay if you have more things like this, as long as they are all aligning like so. So you want to make sure that they all align. They can, there may be spaces in between, but you want to make sure that the ends and the beginnings of each item in your tracks are aligned so that you can use this action to truncate silence. Okay, so once you did all this aligning, then you can select the relevant tracks and start the action. I call it truncate silence. So I'm going to run the action and a bunch of things is going to happen. We'll go through each one of them later, but for now, I'll just show you the thing that the configuration that I'm using to run on this podcast and it actually works. So, okay, uh, this I just say, okay, I don't care about the parent name. I just say, okay, to that, I could write anything at all because that parent will be deleted. And now this is a part of the process that is rendering one track that is going to be disposed of in the end of this process. So by the end of this, you are free to just delete that that track that audio file and it is just one audio file that is as long as your 
podcast. So if your podcast is almost 50 minutes, it's going to create one extra track as if there were one extra person for that long. But then after this truncation is over, you are free to delete that. It's not used anymore. Okay, so now I will uh, trim and split the items. So what's happening here is there is this track that is the composite of both uh, children. And I'm going to truncate or I'm going to take out the moments of silence in this composite track when no one is speaking. These are the settings that work for me. I use a threshold of minus 42 dB. Uh, and in the original video, I said that this parameter, the hysteresis, hysteresis, I didn't know what it was. But then a bunch of people jumped into the comments and explained what that is. So now I know. What this is saying is, you don't want, suppose that you have a track that is almost minus 42 in some points, then it's going over and below just because of some background noise or something. And you don't want the gate, or in this case, the trimming of the items to be trimming and, and not trimming. So you end up with a bunch of small sections. And of course, there is already these two parameters that take care of this. But the hysteresis is something that says, okay, when you reach that minus 42, you have some, some leeway before you actually start to not trim and, and not take out the silence again. So it's like a pad, it's like a safety net for you. So I leave this in minus six, which is the default in the other kind of deletion of silence that I used in the other video called dynamic split. I will go into why I'm not using dynamic split later in this video. Okay, so ignore silence shorter than 300 milliseconds. That's what works for me. And it depends on how fast you want the podcast to be. If you want people to be super snappy and almost not breathing, then you may want to decrease this value. But I think that it's a natural. And for the kind of pace that I'm going, 300 milliseconds is okay. And then the non-silent clips, that's when someone is speaking. I only care if you're speaking for longer than 200 milliseconds. And that's just so I'm not getting any kind of just noise triggering and thinking that that was someone speaking. If someone is just saying like a click, a mouth click, or if they are maybe just breathing into the microphone too loudly, I don't want that to register as, um, as, as sound. And then there are these two parameters, the, the pads. So it's going to take out the moments of silence and whatever remains, I want to pad that just a bit so that it sounds more natural, so that you have some breath, breathing time. So that's why I'm leaving these pads. And I leave the pads in the beginning and end and note that they add up to the amount of silence that I usually keep. So... I, I want the silences in the sentences to be around 300 milliseconds, so I put a pad in the beginning, another pad in the end. And then uh, I'm not doing any kind of peak detection here, so I disable this part. This is definitely not like a kick drum. <laughs> it's, it's not that kind of thing, because this action, this auto stream split items could work with things like drums. You have a bunch of mics in a drum kit, and then you want to take out the bleed from one microphone. When you're hitting the snare, you want to take out the bleed that you end up getting on the mics that are on the hi-hats, for instance. And that's what this is for. I'm not doing that, I'm doing dialogue. So I leave that disabled. And then the mode is split and remove silent areas. I just want to take out the moments of silence. I don't need to split grouped items at times I, I don't need to enable, I don't need to, I can, it doesn't really matter for what I'm doing because this track doesn't even have, or this item doesn't even have other items that are grouped to it. So it doesn't really matter. And then I definitely want to preserve the timing of non-silent areas. Otherwise, I think it would smush together everything in this track, but that's not what I want in this case. And I definitely don't want to run the signal through track effects for detection. Well, in my case, I don't want to. You may want to, 
but I don't think it would matter because this track was created by the action. So the track that we are trimming is actually created by the custom action I'm showing you. So you definitely don't have any effects here. But it's worth noting that if the original tracks had effects on them, then this composite track would be created with effects on them. And if you have effects that you want to ta be taken in account when deleting silence, for instance, suppose that you have something that does some kind of denoising and you want to take that noise in account or that denoised signal in account when you are doing the truncation of silence, if that's the case, then yeah, leave the effects on. But if you only have effects that don't affect the notion of silence, I don't know, you just have some EQ to make the sound of the voices better or something like that, then disable effects before running the custom action that you get in this video, or it will just be longer, it won't hurt anything, but it will just take longer to build this track. And as you saw before, it only took about 20 seconds to render one hour of audio. And if you have effects turned on, then it will take longer. What I do in my case is I just take the audio tracks that I want to trim and I put them on new tracks. I run this process and then I drag the results into the tracks that have effects on them. And that's just the tracks that I have on my template for my podcast. I just drag the resulting items into the tracks with the effects. But for the truncate silence, I leave them on new tracks that have no effects on them. It's up to you what you want to do. Okay, so finally process. This is going to split. As you can see here in the beginning, there was a big moment of silence. That's probably because we ran out to do something else in the middle of the recording. We do have a new baby on the house, so <laughs> we do have to do that sometimes. Okay, so that, as you can see, it sliced up all these moments of silence in the podcast, in the hour of podcast. And now for this last step, what I do is just take all these moments of silence. They are already taken out. The item is already sliced and deleted. But now I want to take all the remaining moments, all the moments when someone is speaking, and I want to smoosh them all together so that they are so that I'm getting rid of that chunk of time when there is no one speaking. And for this, I definitely want to use the item end to take in account when the next item is going to be. I want to use the item end and I don't want any interval in between because remember I already added some pads to the items so that I have some interval between items that are the pads. I could not have the pads and have this instead, just some time interval here of 300 milliseconds, I guess 0.3 seconds, I could say something like this. The problem in doing that is that in these intervals, in these moments of silence, you get literal silence. You have like this portion here. You have literally nothing on, on the air. And that may sound unnatural. If your room has some sound that the microphones are picking up, then when you have some moment like this, it sounds bad. You can hear the items coming in and out. You can hear the, the gate, sort of. So I don't want to do it like that. I prefer to use a pad like I had before in the items. So I have that those moments of silence are not true silence. They're just the microphone speaking up the room as if you were in the room with the people who are speaking. Okay, so, okay, reposition the items. This message, it always comes up. I just say, okay and bam, there you go. Okay, that was a lot because I explained everything. So let me do it again. Just, I'll just run the action, okay? So I command Z, I undid that, and now I'm going to select the tracks. I have a custom keyboard shortcut for the action, and as I'm speaking, it's truncating silence. So that is the actual process that I go through when I'm starting a new podcast. So when I'm editing a new podcast episode, this is what I do. I got rid of a lot of silence, sometimes things like five minutes, 10 minutes of silence in less than a minute. 
that's how long it takes you to get rid of silences in your podcast. It speeds up the editing process so much because so much of what we do as podcast editors is getting rid of silence. It's so annoying to do, it's time consuming, and it's done. There you go, a custom action to truncate silence. Now, now that you know how it works, oh, and by the way, this is the time where you would come here, take all these chunks of audio, maybe bring them to another track that has a bunch of effects in your template for editing podcasts. But note how many edits we have here. Those are all moments of silence that we got rid of. Awesome. Okay, so now that we do, uh, that you know how this looks and uh, you want to use this, I will show you how to install this custom action. So you go first to the description of this video, you will find a download link for a file that is the custom action. And the way you install it is you come here to actions and show action list. I actually have it here on the other display, I'll bring it over. So you take this file and you come here to key map, import shortcut key map, you find that file and it is over here. Yeah, you find that file, you say open, you go on from there. I will not do this because I already have the action, it's already here, but that's how you install this. And if that's all you want to do, if you just want to use this action, you can stop watching right now because now I'm going to show you how the action actually works. Oh, but before I do that, and before you start watch, uh, before you stop watching, if you're not interested in learning how the custom action works, there is one more thing I want to say. It's the same thing I said on the other video. What about these moments here, for instance? This person is speaking clearly. This person is speaking, and this person is not. So it's tempting to just come here and try to delete all these moments, right? And if you know about the well, you just saw that we are able to do this in Reaper. There are different ways of doing this. There is dynamic split, auto trim, and it's tempting to come here to the tracks and delete all these moments of silence. And you may want to do this, but I think it's a bad idea. And here's why. It has to do with the noise, as I was saying before. It's jarring when you just delete the moments of silence and you end up with pure silence like this. The noise floor isn't consistent. It's not like you are in the room with the people. It's like, yeah, it, it just sounds weird. It may sound weird, really. It may not, it depends. You can find a lot of YouTube videos recommending that you do exactly this and get rid of all the silence when someone is not speaking. I think that's a bad idea. I don't think it sounds natural. And, in the other video I said this, I'm going to say this again, there is a better solution. It's something called an auto mixer. And since the previous video, I developed a modification on the auto mixer. There is another video on this channel and you can check the link below about this modification on the auto mixer. But the idea is just, you're going to have this, this auto mixer act like a, an engineer that is going to listen to all the tracks and it's going to adjust the gain on the tracks accordingly. So when this person is speaking, it's as if you brought up the mixer and you said, okay, th this person on track one is speaking, so I'm going to leave the volume here, but the other person is not really speaking. This is just mic bleed because both microphones were in the same room. So as person one is speaking, their voice is also going to microphone two just by the reflections in the room. So I don't want to completely mute this, but I definitely want to turn down the volume. And the amount of turning down the volume depends on how loud the people are. So if multiple people are speaking at the same time, their gains are going to be adjusted accordingly. So if someone is speaking more loudly, they will have more of the gain. And in my modification of the auto mixer, there is even configuration for you to say, oh, that person over there is a moderator of this debate, for instance, and I want that person uh, to have more priority. When they are speaking, everyone else should be lower in volume. Anyway, watch the other video about auto mixing. It's a fun thing. I, I became obsessed with auto mixing and truncation of silence since I started editing podcasts more often. But anyway, check out the other video on auto mixing. 
let's move on. And 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 by the way, check that video on auto mixing so that you don't have to delete all these moments unless someone is like saying uh huh or they bump into the microphone, something like that. Those moments you may want to come here and mute, but this is just one or two moments in hours of editing instead of having to actually come here and take out the silence in every place. Okay, and now talking about auto mixing, let's see how this custom action works, the truncation of silence. So I will open here the truncation of silence so that I can look at all the steps. I will put it here. And I'll leave the editor over here. Okay, so as I said, you have to start, I'm going to undo this so that we have the original tracks. And we these are the original tracks. And I'm going to select the tracks, okay? As I said, this is how you start, you select the tracks. And then what this custom action is doing, first of all, is normalizing the loudness of the tracks. As you saw when I undid, these waves got shorter, right? In the original files, the waves are a lot quieter. The original files are a lot quieter. And that's because when you're recording, you don't want to clip. That would be terrible. It would be digital distortion. So you put the gain very low. And I record such that I'm getting peaks around minus 12, but really the major part of the audio is around minus 18 dB. So definitely I'm not clipping, but that is very quiet. And someone is speaking more loudly than someone else. Usually I, this person here is speaking, that's, that's me, that's track one, that's me, is speaking more loudly than the co-host, the other person over here. So you want to first of all level everyone such that when you render a track that is the composite of everyone speaking, then you will not maybe cut someone just because they are too quiet. That's definitely what, not what you want to do. So the first thing we do is we select all items on the track and you normalize all the items to minus 23 loves. And that is just a way of saying normalize everyone's voices to a level that is good for editing and it's good for applying effects like compression and equalization all those effects that you would apply when editing a podcast work well when the tracks are normalized to minus 23 db so i'm going to select all the items in all the tracks and i'm going to normalize them and now i'm just using keyboard shortcuts to do these actions but when running the custom action it's going to do that for you so now the tracks uh, the volumes on the tracks is still the same. We are talking about normalizing the items on the tracks and we are not changing the content of this audio. What we are doing is just, I'm, I'm going to select one item to show you that it's just changing the volume on the item. So it's like taking the volume knob on that item and cranking it up or down to reach that level of loudness, minus 23 loops. It's not destructing your original audio. It's just changing the game. It's something that you could do by taking the top of the track and dragging it up or down, okay? So it's something that you could do yourself, but uh, this truncate, uh, th this, this normalized loudness action is doing that for you such that everyone is on a consistent level. So after running this, you can see that both tracks have peaks that are around the same size. And that is the goal. So next, it's going to create a folder for all these tracks. And that's when this comes up. It doesn't matter what name you give to the parent track, because it's going to be deleted in the end. This is just so we can have one file, one wave that is everyone speaking together. And that's the one we are going to remove the silence from. We'll get there. Okay, so the parent name. Okay, so now it created this parent. And the next part is to select the parent, so I'm going to do it here, select the parent, and now it's saying freeze to mono. So what this is doing is when 
this person is speaking, you can see it here. When this person is speaking, you can see it here as well. This parent track has the audio of all the children. And what we want is to render that to audio and truncate the silence here on this track. That's what we are going to do next. So we come here to render freeze tracks and we are going to freeze tracks to mono. And that's of course because I have sources that are mono. I am recording the podcast with microphones like these that are mono. If you're recording with microphones that are stereo, then you may want to change this custom action so that it doesn't say freeze to mono, but freeze to stereo. Or if you have multi-channel microphones, you have quadraphonic microphones, you may want to change this to freeze to multi-channel. Okay, so now we have this item here that is a literal sound, that is a WAV file that has all people speaking. It's as if you had recorded with a single microphone, everyone in one microphone. Okay, so now let's go to the next one, which is select all items in track. So I'm going to select this item and then unlock it. And then I actually run the auto trim split items and that's going to remove silence from this parent. Okay, so let's find here. I don't have an, uh, a shortcut for this. Auto trim split items, remove silence. And that's when this screen comes up and I'm using the same settings as before. So now I have this parent track split up, but not the children, the children are untouched. And that's when we get to really the core. This is the heart of this custom action. And that is, I'm going to select the children, uh, the, the children items. So I'm going to select the children items, but the parent track, okay? So I'm going to select by doing all these shenanigans here, these three parts, what I'm doing is I'm selecting the items of the children, but the track of the parent so that I can call this. This is the heart of everything. This is the magic action that actually makes this whole process work. It is this gem I found, and I, I should have said this before, but you definitely want to have SWS and Repack installed to use this custom action. <laughs> That's definitely necessary. But this is a gem I found in Repack. I think, I think it's in Repack. It may be in SWS, but no, I think it's in Repack. So what this does is, is split the selected items, so the children, according to the items on the first selected track. So according to these items, that's the first selected track. So according to these items, it's going to split the children according to the parent. And delete the new items at spaces. So it's going to delete all the items that are on the spaces. So it's going to, do, to split, for instance, here and here. And then this in the middle that is a space, it's going to get rid of it. Let's run this and see how it works. Okay, so we are going to run this and you can see that it got rid of all these gaps in the children. Awesome, that's what we wanted. So now we are going to go next to the reposition of selected items. So the selected items are the split items. I can just reposition them. And that is a task, that, that's an action that comes with SWS. So I can run this one and that's when this screen comes up and I use these settings and now it's smooshed everything together. Now that it did that, we can cross fade adjacent items. So here in this junction, when the two items meet, there is no cross fading, which may result in a click if the transition doesn't happen when the audio is completely silent. So what we do is add a cross fade. So cross fade adjacent. Yep, cross fade adjacent selected items. When, when we run that, there is this small cross fade to get rid of clicks. 
Next, we uh, yeah. So next, we unfreeze the tracks, and that's because this track here was frozen. So I can come here to unfreeze, and that gets rid of some um, changes to the routing that happen when you freeze a track. So for instance, here you can see in the routing that these children tracks are not actually routing to the parent. And that's annoying. So to fix that, we just unfreeze the original track and that, that warning is going to come up saying, oh, you edited some of the parent. And specifically what we did is we, we took out the silence from the parent. Do you want to continue? Yeah, I want to continue because I want to get rid of that track entirely. That parent track, I want to, to get rid of it. So I dismantle it. And I think this action is super cool because what it does is this, dismantle selected folder. What it does is it just turns that thing that was a folder, and you can do that, I guess, by clicking on this button, but it takes that track that used to be a folder and makes it not a folder anymore. And then remove the tracks, which is just delete that track. And that's what you end up with. So now we ran through the action step by step and you understand exactly how it works. And if you want to change it to do it somewhat differently, you are welcome to let me know if this works for you. And if you find it useful, then leave it a like on this video and subscribe to the channel because I am making more and more videos about Reaper, about programming with JS effects, about custom actions that help me like this one. And yeah, a bunch of more things. I think you'll find it fun. A lot of uh, programming as well in this channel. So subscribe to the channel, give this a like, leave a comment saying that you actually used this and it was useful for you. And that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. I see you on the next one.